Welcome to Trading Lounge and the US indices for the 22nd of May. And I want to start with the NASDAQ today on the daily chart here. We'd been counting from the low here in terms of 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 here, then 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 here to finish off here. So we uh, may have a top in place. If that's the case, we can pull back to this place here. But it's very dangerous in calling uh, when you've got a bullish market and you're calling a top in at a particular point there. So you always need to take that with a grain of salt. And you always need a strategy to um, to continue to the upside to stay with the trend. So we need to be a little bit mindful uh, of of that and not to get swept away in things but we uh, approach everything evenly and we have strategies for that long and short because we just all we're interested in is being on the right side at the right time so let's uh, move in here a little bit closer through here so we've been looking at three four and one two three four and five here we know we've got overlapping wave structures there but that occurs um now and again i see that when especially when you're working around large numbers so that's it's a bit of a common theme so you just kind of take that on board and um you know and it may resolve itself later in a different way um <clears throat> but all we've been doing this week is been counting five waves up through to this space here so let's look in from four to five here on this so from wave four here we've been looking at one and two here and three and four here and then looking up for five waves in this little area through here so i might have to go to the tick chart for that if i've updated that so from this way four we've got one and two here then one and two and three and four and five here and then we're just counting up from way four here to way five which counts as one and two one two one two three four five for three four and five i think we're here last time and wave four and wave five to come in here so we just made a new high here for that to play out through here so we can see that we do have an impulse wave here so it is possible to short here um, of course this could just be an a and a b and a c and come down here and then move up from that point so you'd need to be a little bit mindful um, of that we also need to understand uh, where we should put the stop so we just start working from this space here 61.8 percent is here so that just gives us a bit of an idea of um what we where and what we need to protect at that point so if we see the market pull back up and find support on 94.50 well then we kind of like sort of need to be looking at uh, a bullish approach at that point but uh, as long as that stays in place so uh, stops can go uh, here for that just above wave two here one two three four five so that could go here and like i said you know um pick and tops is uh you know it's a bit of a mugs game really so we need to normally get gather some evidence the only evidence i've got is counting five waves up here and then seeing five coming down here so we're in the early stages of um of a possible move lower um but just we need to look at all the options for um for um you know further upside and also further downside we need to put them all in a basket and then sort through them and and uh and see how the market pans out so normally we find the thursday uh, bearish and the friday bullish as well so um would need to look at being uh long in this somewhere up where the stop is here so we don't miss anything on that side because um couple of things here let's just have a little look here for starters so this low here to this high here that brings us on the 61.8 percent mark here so we're you know shorting right in on support levels uh here so i mean it's possible that this could just be oops could be just um you know up for one here and back for two here and then continuing higher through here right so we need to be you know we need to be mindful like pick and tops is serious business and uh, sometimes you can just nail it and sometimes it takes you know three or four times to get to get in on the short side so it's a bit of a, a bit of a job it's not like just buying a pullback in a trend so um, yeah with that in mind I'll just sort of recap that uh, on the four hour chart uh, here it's possible that we have a, um, a 
I mean, the other thing here too, we've seen Amazon hit uh, two and a half thousand, which is um, a medium level. So it's also reacting uh, from that top there as well. So anyway, let's have a look at the S&P 500 from here and work in. So the S&P is um, a little bit the same uh, here. So from this low here now, We've got this low here as a wave two or wave four here. Okay, so um, we'll, we'll go back in and have a look, look at all of that. But our main job this week really was to look at wave one and two here and three here and four here and then look up for five waves in this sequence here. And I can get five waves out of this here. And we can look at that on the tick chart just to confirm that. But once again, here... Um, we haven't really made a nice top, we've just made a double top here. So it's quite possible that if we take this low here and that high here, that brings us in on the 61.8% mark here. I just want to be flexible and look at both sides. I don't want to marry any particular side. I, there's, no, there's, no, um, there's no reason for doing that. Um, just want to try to build up a, a, a case of evidence, you know, um, and... Uh, not so much opinion. So we, we can count one, two, three, four, five here. But the problem with this is that, um, like I said, we could also count this as wave one here and an A and a B and a C back for wave two here and then move up from that point. So that's on the card. And yes, it could just drop through here and you could probably, uh, like we've done on the NASDAQ, be short from this particular point here as well. Um, on the four hour chart I might just go back to the daily now that we've just sort of looked in there. and we'll dive back in here again as well uh, intraday here <clears throat> but one of the things we've been looking at lately is that um, we've been looking at this as one two three four five for the top here and then the ABC here so all of this move here as well if that is five waves up there we have made a new high here so um, but this we can also count five waves up there. So I'll just clean this up here a little bit. I'm just chatting really, just sort of, you know, just working through this. So it's possible that a couple of things here. So first of all, we look at this here. So that's the 61.8% here. So it's possible for this to to pull back into this space and then move up from there. I mean, in turning in turning bearish in this market, I'd normally look at group two here and then normally the 72 in that group two to become bearish at that point and then we would go down from that point. Um, so we're not we're not there yet. It's possible. Uh, anything's possible. Um, but I'm just saying that group two here normally supports the market into to the closest largest number in this case the 3000 and the same with the group one here normally um, once we get support on top of the th number three here the 300 then we know that the orders start to change in the market depth and people start to um, forget about this number here and start to look at the number this number five up here the next level so one two three five in the Fibonacci price ratio for the trading levels so um, yeah we could just push up to here for wave one and back for wave two three four and five and push up to here and uh, as I mentioned this has been our count here for that wave two here and we can keep that there for the time being, but we've also could look at this as wave four here as well. So that that would also look like um, this here on the two hour chart. I know this can sound a bit confusing, but um, looking at one and two over here, all the way for three here and ABC for four here, and then one, two, three, four, five coming up into this space here and having a top. <clears throat> um, Yes, we know that um, we never had a we never reached the top here, so we thought we'd probably reach the top over here. Um, this is kind of a double top here, and double tops to me are never the end of the of the trend to the upside. So that's um, a little bit uh, helpful in, in one 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 way, a little piece of uh, uh, well, it's not really evidence, but it, it's it's um, theory. 
And we also know that there's a lot of resistance at this particular level here, and uh, we know that the um, the open interest in the options market is has got a lot of uh, you know volume there as well. So there's <clears throat> there's pressure there um, at the 300 there for uh, the spy. Um, so yeah, look once again here we could have a top in play here now and pull all this way back down through here. So we just need to build a, a bit of a case for for that. We can look at this here as one and two here and three here and four here and five here. This is uh, uh, a little bit you know a little bit short, but let's go in and have a little look at that now that we've had a look at. Um, both counts. So coming back into this space, I do have another count on the tick chart that I've been tracking as well for this. It probably wouldn't fit the NASDAQ, but we're going to look at it anyway. And on the 15 minute chart here, um, well, we don't need that anymore here. So <clears throat> didn't quite make it to where we're going. Um, it does appear that we've got one, two, three, four, five down here, and then then a correction back up to here, and then down through to here. Like I said, it's sitting right on the 61.8% here, and it does appear that we've got five waves in this little move here. A little bit sharp, I'd say, for an A and a B and a C wave here. So it's probably likely that um, we, we can go lower. Um, also, to this count... This count here sort of bothered me a little bit as well. So I'm just going to sort of go into the tick chart and uh, look at something else here. Just another way of looking at this. So from this low here, I've counted this five waves in here. So one and two here. And then I've counted this here a little bit differently here. So this is sort of pulling out the detail. So and one and two here, and then all of this five waves up here for one and two, and then three and four and five here for the third wave here, the fourth wave here, and then the fifth wave here for the third, then an A and a B and a C for the fourth wave here, and then five waves up for the fifth wave here. But that just leaves me the third wave. We've been talking about this all week, this particular um uh, this this particular count we've been over, over it and it just seems to be sort of playing out here so what was you know what was obvious before in terms of one two three four and five here is the top when I pull this apart here it's not quite like that um, it, it can play out a little bit further so that means that um, if I look at this here the low of wave two here roughly to roughly the top in there. That leaves the 38.2% uh, in this space here and the 50% here. So we could say that the 2,900 here, if that became the retested resistance um, for, for this count only, then we could eliminate this count for for this. Um, we also know too that the other count, if we counted one and two and three and four and five up here, then the 61.8% mark would be would be lower down here at 28.50. So if we get resistance at 2,900 here, we can eliminate this count, okay? That would be one thing. Um, because the reason I'm saying this for is because we're in a bullish market, in a bullish trend, and we need to know, you know, we need to work through all the scenarios and, and eliminate them one by one. So this, this wave, blue wave four here, we can eliminate that if the 2900 becomes the retested resistance. We could eliminate the other one if that if we count this up as five waves here as wave one and then coming back for wave two, if the 2850 becomes the retested resistance, well, then we can eliminate that one. And then that means that we would be coming down further from that point. So that's the way we just we can do it just by, you know, one by one uh, as such. Um, so, yeah, in this case here, we we can look, if we go back to 
the 15 minute chart here for a moment. So we don't have any long trades in, we got stopped out under this low here. Okay, so the next thing to do is that if we're going to go long, then we can look to go long um, above these highs here. Here. Because we know we've got one, two, three, four, five here, and this is pulled back up roughly to 50%. So um, we can go along from that point and then look to, to build in high, at higher points over that side. <coughs> now, if we're going to go short, then we really want to be going short under this five wave sequence here. So that's basically what we'll do. You don't have to put full trades in there. They can just be much smaller trades at that case. And you know that this one here that could take us down to the 2900 here. So th that other count that we were looking at, where we're looking at a blue wave four here, that would be one and two here and three in here somewhere and four and five here. And then we could move up from that point. So it may be worthwhile taking profit at this particular point and then waiting for that to become the resistance at that point, if that's going to be the case and you want that as a retested resistance at that point. Now the sticky part with that is we know that um, down here at the 28.50, the 61.8% mark here, um, we know that there's support there. So, you know, it's going to take the market a while to get through that and it may not get through that. So you'll have to manage that trade here. So make that one smaller and then look to see if the 28.50 here becomes the retested resistance, and then you can look to add onto the downside from that point there. Um, okay, so I think that's kind of covered it. I'm sorry that it's not clear, and there's there's um, there's an array of different counts, but you know we are at a, a possible turning point in the market here, and we need to look at the downside and where the resistances are and how we're going to handle that. So they're just a few ideas that um, that may help. Um, and let's just see what plays out. I mean, we've 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 had some good trades, and now we just need to be a little bit patient to try to figure out, um, you know, if what we're thinking is going to to play out uh, at this stage. So um, let's just let let the uh, the cards fall where they may and um, and then we'll pick up pick pick up the thread because we're looking for a trend um, obviously um, to the downside and if that's the case we need to you know be on that but at the same time we don't want to be you know sucked in and the market's still going to be bullish because you know we, we're just pointing out that you know after all this time here all this time here we're saying oh well that's the top now you know that's a possible top here so we just need we need plans for that and we can we can see that the market is really choppy and you know it's struggling at this particular point here all the all the you know we've had a nice third wave here but all the trends to the upside here are becoming smaller and smaller and that's obvious on the uh on the uh on the nasdaq for for that so on, on this one here so these we've got nice long trend here, this one, this one, and then this one here is even looks like it's even shorter, about the same size as well. So we can see that it's struggling. Um, yeah, anyway, look, I'll leave it at that and um, enjoy the weekend and thanks for the support. Cheers.